In the beginning of March, my niece posted a TED Talk on Facebook. It was a woman from Mississippi who had been paneled on a jury that was going to decide the death penalty. And when they asked her during jury selection, if the evidence warrants it, would you be able to vote for the death penalty? And I paraphrase her answer. She responded with a resounding yes. Then the time came for her to check that box, and she had a hard time doing it. The rest of the speech went on. She did eventually check the box for the death penalty, um, not because it was something she wanted to do, but because it was something she felt the jurors, the other jurors, wanted her to do. She went on for the rest of the speech to talk about how she felt, how it affected her having that um, on her in the back of her mind at all times, that she was the reason this gentleman was dying. She went so far as contacting him to ask his forgiveness. She contacted other jurors to try and get some relief from this tension that she had. And she was diagnosed eventually with PTSD. As I was watching this, I kept thinking, what in the world could have happened between the jury selection and the day she needed to decide that could put her there? Because I'm a big uh, proponent of the death penalty. So I'm thinking, what happened? I watched this two weeks before my own jury duty. Being in school to be a paralegal gives me some insight into where to go in terms of websites where I can go see what kind of cases are out there. Now, I didn't do a lot of in-depth research because I didn't want to have to be pulled off of a jury because of that, but I did do some. There weren't any big murder trials out there. The day of jury duty on Monday, I walked in. At 10.30 in the morning after we'd been through orientation, I was one of the second groups called up. There were 28 of us. What that told me is this is a big case. They only need 14, and they were going to go through a lot of jurors. It's criminal, and there was some component of it that was going to eliminate a lot of people. We go in, sit down. Sure enough, the judge says, this is going to go into next week. You're only assigned jury duty for one week. But they knew already, because of the number of witnesses on this case, it was going to go into the following week. And we all needed to have our schedule clear. So that eliminated some people. The next thing he did was read the charges. The charges were three counts of rape, three counts of sexual battery, and three counts of gross sexual imposition to three girls under the age of 12, one of whom was his daughter. That eliminated a few people. We went through jury questioning. They completed what they needed to complete. And at 4.45 Monday afternoon, I was selected to be on the jury and with the two alternates. The case was supposed to start the following day at 1.30. We all get there, sitting in the jury room. At three o'clock, the judge watch, walks in and says, he took a plea deal. Instead of going to through the trial and possibly being sentenced to life in prison, he made the decision to take a plea deal of 15 years, five years for each child. It was pled down to, and I did a lot of research after the fact, but it was pled down to three counts of sexual battery. So he does not have to register as a sex offender. As I was going through the process of jury selection and sitting in that room, I kept thinking about this TED Talk that I listened to. When you first walk in, if you've never had jury duty, when you first walk in as, a, as the uh, selected jurors, you walk through the courtroom and you pass by the defendant's table and the prosecutor's table. And so I went up and sat in the jury box. I didn't want to look at him. I'm just like, I just, I don't know what it was. I didn't know anything about the case. I didn't know anything, but I just didn't want to look at him. Well, then they ask you, do you know him? So you have to look at him. So I did. Then later in the afternoon after lunch, and they were going through jury selection and really questioning the jurors, and everybody's attention was focused on us, I started people watching, which is one of my pastimes. And I started watching him. He was engaged. He was speaking with his attorney. He was watching what we were saying. He was listening. He wasn't in a three-piece suit, but he was well-groomed. He was clean. He wasn't tattooed up. <clears throat> in other words, he was a human being. What struck me when I realized that, because he was not the monster that I pictured would have to, that you would have to be to be that, to, to commit that type of crime. He was a human being. And later on, after this was all over and we got to leave, I realized I now understood
understood why she was diagnosed with PTSD. I was one of 12 people who had that jury continued, had that trial continued, and we had to make a decision. I was one of 12 people who was gonna decide the fate of this man's life. No one else was gonna do it. I went back and watched the TED Talk again, and I completely understood how she felt. Thank you very much.